for coming out. We'll go through the uh, the crime stats. We gave out some uh, flyers there. Those are the holiday safety tips, safety awareness tips. We were giving those out in Charlestown when we had that woman recently uh, who came up the uh, Sullivan's tea stop. She was over by the 99. A guy got out of the van, pepper sprayed, I punched her a few times in Rockville. Oh, that yeah. That's the only crime we've had like that throughout the city for the entire year. Uh, the guy was in a gray van. The van was recovered. It's under investigation. We were looking at cameras over at the Bunky Hill Mall and the uh, Bunky Hill Shopping Mall, the community college, but the camera angles are not that good, so we just wait on information uh, to see if anything comes in. The woman, if you didn't hear about it, the woman that was in the papers about how she got dragged into the graveyard over in Charleston and was sexually assaulted, apparently that part did not happen. Uh, she was uh, 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 assaulted, uh, and we are investigating. Still continuing with that so we thought it would be important for everyone here to not only have the holiday safety tips you can take a quick look at that you know there's some shopping tips some traveling tips and just holiday gatherings about you know drinking and driving on the safety win is self-defense tip please pay attention to those things about walking before we get into the crime stats uh, downtown we've had I believe it's uh, 21 robberies uh, more than half of them uh, it's the, this isn't an iPhone, I got the cheapy brand, but if you have an iPhone on the street, they're worth $200. Wow. So why would I bother to grab somebody's handbag and do an unarmed robbery, or uh, try and grab a guy's wallet, you know, you're breaking into a car. <coughs> you can grab a couple of these a night. Street value is $200. You can make an awful lot of money. And you know, people are very casual about being on the phone. They're not paying attention to their surroundings. So that's the number one crime we see out there downtown for robberies. Uh, car breaks are down, which is great news. Uh, Teddy Bowl with the B&Es, we have some good news to report um, with the investigation of the B&Es. And uh, then we'll get into the loud bodies. And uh, if anyone has any questions again on this flyer, that, uh, again, I'd like you to take a good look at that. that. That has everything to do with your safety, your everyday life, Walking, using your car when you feel threatened, if you are being assaulted, what you should do, how to defend yourself, the importance of getting a good description. That's the most important thing. If you remember way back when we had the sexual assault guy that was groping women, he'd always come up from behind, he'd have a hoodie up for the most part, and then when he came up from behind, he'd keep going in the same direction. When we try and get a description, it was very difficult because by the time you figured out what was going on, you're only going to get the back side of it. So that descriptive part is important. Uh, and again, uh, without going into a tandem here, but the again with these flies, you know, we had the woman up at Beacon Hill uh, that we uh, I'm sure we've all read about who was dragged into the apartment. She was sexually assaulted. She was raped, and uh, that person took property from her home, robbed her, and also committed lasting in the sense that after the crime was committed, he went across Cambridge Street to an ATM. Bank of America, and through good police work and good partnerships with an awful lot of people that were in partnership, with, just like we are with people here, we got a lot of phone calls, a lot of good information, and working off that phone, uh, and basically being able to trace it back, we come up with a party uh, in another part of town who could identify the person who just sold them that phone, and that's how we made it. So that's a, that's a, it's a big arrest. The gentleman was a level three sex offender in the back. But no, I was just going to say, <clears throat> I heard on the radio this week that the phone manufacturers are coming up with this thing where they can permanently disable the type of phone. Yeah, now they're coming up with another device that can, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if the right word is to sort of counter that. Um, but yeah, that's true. That's true. Once it's installed, you can shut it down. Yeah. Yes. So. <clears throat> Uh, what else? And then just on whistles, uh, you know, it, it's not a bad idea to get whistles. We're not big on the pepper spray. Uh, pepper spray is good, but at the same time, if you're being robbed, you get the pepper spray out of your pocketbook or your wallet. If you're in close containment, uh, whatever you spray more than likely is going to end up on you. So uh, if you're looking to disable the bad guy, you could also disable yourself. Uh, so that's something you have to really consider. Maybe go taking a few classes on how to use it, but as we always say, if you're being assaulted or robbed, I would always say the best thing to do is yell fire. People go to the windows, they go to the doors, they want to know what's going on right away. Then throw up the police help, 
You're always fending off the attack and trying to get away, trying to be invasive as possible, be elusive as possible. And uh, hopefully that will never happen to anyone in this room, but please review those tips. I think that's probably why we're here. And the holiday safety tips, and I'm going to turn it over to Teddy for the uh, last 30 days of crime statistics. Last 30 days, no homicides. We have the one sexual offense, I'll get into that. We have the one robbery. Uh, one aggravated assault compared to as last year. E and E's are up 11. With, um, we got some information on them from two. Auto theft three cars were stolen and robbed in the last 30 days. We had uh, five larcenies down from seven from last year. Three uh, larcenies from the motor vehicle down from six. No graffiti reported. No community disorders reported. Eight toes. Uh, 72 move, moving violations and 370 parking citations. Ted, I called up the guy with me like about two weeks ago from uh, building on Fruit Street. They did come down with the, the busters? Yeah. Did they take a police report? I don't know. I called up City Hall. Oh, okay. They must have sent them right out. I gave them the, the address. They're pretty good. They, they come, did come yeah, down and clean the building. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering why it wasn't. Is it, there was no police report done? Yeah. This is well, no police report? No, well, no, it's not going to get a police report. We didn't know about it. for insurance claims or if it's a hate crime, but people can, just on your own, you can. Yeah, I, just, I don't own the truck, it's just so much. Graffiti buses will come down. If you sign a release form, they'll gladly take the, uh, the graffiti off. But you don't actually have to file a police report. We prefer that you file a report so we can. We can track the tag up. That's what's important to watch. Right. Right. Anybody oh, okay. can call for feeding buses. Sometimes it's just scribble. Yeah, I got it. The girl wants to know what it went. Oh. So, what does it say? It's for me. I don't know. <laughs> well, sir, as I told them. The, uh, <laughs> the one sex offense was on the 18th of November. <coughs> it was a um, nothing resident brought a friend back to the apartment. She had been all drinking in, uh, in the morning, she reported it. And this uh, was a good, you know, didn't go well. Anybody worth it? He's done an investigation because as of the next day, they weren't sure if she was actually, uh, you know, had a problem. Uh, the one robbery was 101 Atlantic Ave. Yeah, the gentleman walking home at, uh, on the 4th of uh, November, 12.35 p.m., an uh, individual came up to him in a gray hoodie and a buzz cut. Uh, basically, he displayed a kitchen knife and demanded money. And the, uh, he handed over $45 and the suspect fled on foot. And that was again at 101 Atlantic Ave, uh, the uh, 4th of November. And the, the one aggravated assault actually was last evening on Cleveland Place, and there was a domestic, uh, an individual was stabbed on Cle at uh, Cleveland Place last night. And uh, he is still in the hospital. Right? She's, um, she was arrested last night in the court today. The um, B and E's up 11. All right. First one was on the 12th, 39 Tileston. The um, two p between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. The victim reports that a she was napping in a rear bedroom and then someone forced open the front door and grabbed a Dell um, laptop. He's on 11 November 12th again, 94 Prince at 2 p.m. The victims report that um, while they were at work, an unknown person kicked in their front door and stole three laptops, an iPod, and U.S. currency totaling $600 out of their apartment, first floor apartment, 94 points. On the 12th again, 94 Fulton, between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., the victim's reporting that uh, front door pried open, 
And um, she's actually, she's it's claiming at this time there was nothing taken from the, uh, her apartment. Right? <coughs> the door was pried open and not, no property taken at this time. Same date, the 12th, 280 North Street between 10 p.m. and 4, 10 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. the next afternoon. The uh, victim's reporting that a um, broke into a mailbox in the lobby of the apartment and stole a U.S. Postal Service money order worth $1,050 from her mailbox inside her building. On the 16th, this is 139 Salem. There was one, two, three, three breaks in the building between um, the hours of between 8 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. These three apartments were broken into. And if you remember, this is the one the suspect was identified and he is, as we speak, there's an warrant out for him. He's known to the uh, detectives. And he's from uh, Charlestown. And he's, that's all he's done his whole life. And so they got a warrant out for him as we speak. I'm willing today to get them all. We have McCone for it five, maybe six right now. Of the DNA. Yeah, we have three different addresses on it, but he has not been apprehended at this time. But uh, we have the two BEs in Charleston. Uh, the uh, next one was on the 17th of November, 145 North Washington Street, between 2:54 a.m. and 3:01 a.m. The uh, front door, glass door was kicked in and someone stole a microwave oven <coughs> in the building. On the 18th at 4.45 p.m., 11 Cooper Street, uh, the victim is reporting that the This one here, this, she knows the suspect, right? He's, a, um, he's reporting to her as a former friend, right? But he uh, actually did not get any property um, in the building. He was just trying to force his way in through a window. Right? On the 6th, 17th, uh, 64 Prince, 8.30 a.m. to 12.01 a.m. The, vic the victim's reporting an attempted B&E. Right? She's noticed that there was scrapes and damage to the front door lock, but no entrance into the apartment. And on the 21st, 20 Parmenta Street, 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. the next day, it was... Um, Property removed from the build, the apartment was a um, Blu-ray di compact discs, Xbox <coughs> machine, and controllers, and uh, other electr electrical electronic equipment. And the suspect is known to the uh, victim. He um, he was actually hired as a construction worker. Girl drunk out of her mind at 2:30 and smashed a 
four cars outside of 50 Bridge Street, and an Bridge officer okay. was called to the scene of the crime, and there's no mention on it. Right? This is well, very clear. Let's, let's, let's just go through the reports first, and then at the end of the reports, then we'll do the Q&A. But, but what do I tell you? Just go through oh, the all right, because that, that, I mean, I'm just confused how that wasn't on the report. No, this that's not doing the for residential. We're doing the B&Es right now. Oh, these are, these yeah. are just B&Es? Well, we're just yeah. doing, we're doing oh, categories all right. right now. Okay. All right, on the last lease, there was, there was four on 11-11-226 Hanover, lastly in the building, the uh, victims reporting that the um, there was a restaurant on at 226 Hanover Street. Uh, actually, her son left an iPod on the chair in the restaurant. And somebody stole it. Right. On 11-11 to 101 Atlantic Ave, there was an another restaurant. And the victim reports her bag was stolen from an Apple phone, U.S. currency, credit cards, personal papers. Mm -hmm. On the 15th of November, 98 North Washington Street, the building's reporting. Uh, so an individual came in and stole property from a desk, U.S. currency, a uh, employee's personal belongings, credit cards and bank statements and bank cards from the building. And the, on the 19th of November, 7.44 p.m., 100 Atlantic Ave, the, um, actually it's the Parks and Recreation Building at the park. Somebody um, actually broke in and stole um, the handbag, laptop, cell phone, right? In personal papers, and this person was arrested mm -hmm. at the scene. Mm -hmm. And the final one is a last name of a bicycle at uh, 1124, a two battery walk. The victim's bike was stolen, his truck bike. And we had the three car brakes, actually, it's down from six. 54 Cooper on November 8th. 6 p.m. The victim's reporting his 2008 Jeep Wrangler was broken into and his Burberry sunglasses, two pairs of sunglasses, and his $40 in U.S. currency stolen from the car. On the 24th, 7.30 p.m., 340 North Street, victim's 2004 Toyota Corolla was broken into, his sort of jewelry taken from the vehicle, a duffel bag, boots, other clothing, and the third one was on the 25th, 5 p.m., one commercial street, the victim's 2000 Volvo was broken into, and the um, Louis Vuitton bag was stolen with their clothing and an iPad computer in the bag stolen from the yard. Uh, yeah. In the three auto thefts, 325 North Street on the 1st of November, victim reports 2005 Subaru Legacy was stolen on 325 North. The, uh, at Endicott and Thatcher on the 18th, the victim's reporting the uh, 1998 Jeep was stolen. Right. It was recovered over in Charlestown. And on the 18th again at Princeton Snowhill, victims reporting car stolen, a uh, 2000 Jeep right, stolen, and uh, in Princeton Snowhill, and it was um, recovered on uh, Old Rutherford Avenue, Charlestown. The okay. first of the three was a Subaru? First was. Hold on. The first was a Subaru, yep, 2005 Subaru Legacy, and uh, two Jeeps. And the arrest, right, there was 10 for the amount, right, violation of the auto laws, there was an OERI arrest on the 7th at 12.14 a.m. in the morning at Crossing Fulton. The assault and battery, right, arrest was at Atlantic and Cross. Right. That was a, uh, uh, the victim was, um, 
actually beaten up, all right, in the, um, to the head and face area, and uh, the officer arriving on the scene arrested the individuals involved. Again, at Atlantic and Cross Street at 2.28 a.m. The assault and battery on Charter Street, 1.04 p.m. on the 18th. I don't know. All right, that, again, it was a domestic, domestic incident. And the, uh, male was, the male was arrested at the, at the scene. What, what was the number on that? 51 shot. All right. Yeah. The run on robbery was a purse snatch on the 19th, 7.44 p.m. All right, this was an um, individual on a bike, drove by, stole the woman's purse, and there was an officer came upon the scene and they chased the uh, person on the bike into Charlestown and he was arrested and she identified him in the property. Right, and that was on the 19th. Right, and the incident took place at 100 Atlantic. Uh, harassing phone calls. This is an ongoing problem on an elderly issue and the person, uh, the suspect, female suspect, Elderly suspect was arrested. Assault and battery on Cooper Street and on the 22nd, 2:20 a.m. All uh, right. The uh, again, this was a domestic boyfriend-girlfriend incident. He was arrested. And again, this is the elderly incident again. This female elderly woman is arrested again for violation of restraining order. Sad ongoing problem right now. And on the 29th of November, assault and battery, all right, 9:52 p.m. on Cleveland Place, and there was an arrest of a male, a domestic. Right. And on the 29th of November, 10:10 10, 10 a.m., the officers observed a person trying to sell razor blades, stolen razor blades from Endic at Endicott Cooper. Numerous of stolen from a local pharmacy. He was arrested. And the last night, the female arrested Cleveland Place on domestic assault and battery, dangerous weapon. Okay. And that's it for the arrest for the last 30 days. Yeah. All right, all right, go ahead. Um, one other thing before I begin into this, uh, we're going to have this pepper mace, yeah. you have to obtain it at Ruggles, in and around Ruggles Station, or are they mail, uh, making it available up by uh, them on the You have to get out and you have to fill out a form. You can get the form online, but you actually have to get on the, you have to pay a fee. You get what's called an FID card, a firearms identification card. Believe it or not, you can actually obtain a, a rifle and shotgun, you know, but that's how you would get the pepper spray. You have to be licensed. They have pepper spray. You just that can't, I know. can't just go out and buy it online and then you get another person. Where, where, what I'm asking you is, do you have to go to the police station, the Ruggles station, to obtain that? It's right Once next to, you, right yeah. next to North yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I, my husband works at North East, and that is not the greatest area to go. At one time, you guys did make it accessible on Sudbury Street, which I think you should do it again. No, it's the forms, but you still have the, so the license. You still have no, I know, but what I'm trying to say is people went up and showed me an electric, an electric bill or some identification that showed that they live in the North End. They did not have to go by North Easton to obtain this. They made it accessible on Sudbury Street via police stations, and I think that's the best thing to do. I'll check Since into that, but I, I, I don't think that happened. I that think, did happen. I think before we were really on, had that online status, you could pick up the form and fill them out. You still had to submit them to police headquarters. Again, you can go online, you can fill out the form and submit them. Right. But, yeah, but you're still going to have to go in and get your card. You're going to have an interview. They're going to talk to you a little bit because with the FID card, then you you still open the shotgun and the rifle part of it. So it's well, amazing. nine, ten years ago, they were making it accessible at Sudbury Street. I'll check into that, but I do not recall. Maybe the application itself. Again, you can get the application online. Is that training for that? Um, I think it's important that you know you have a little background on how to use it's it. Mandatory. Uh, no. No. I mean, it's Kenny and pepper spray. But bottom line is, if I have an attacker, if I have an attacker, come, you're coming at me. 
If, I, if you're coming at me and I spray you and you grab me, everything I sprayed you with is now on me. If, if, if what we call, if you're, if you're upwind, if you're upwind, which means the wind is blowing that way, that's great. But if, the, if, it's, if, if, if you're downwind and I blow it at you, it's going to come right back in my face. Now I'm blinded by it. Um, so again, and if you're spraying, you know, it, again, it, it's, it's pepper spray, so you can actually spray the facial area, you know, and if you want it to get into the nose and into the eyes, and you know, you, it, it's sort of that partial blinding. You, you, you're incapacitating the person you're attacking. But at the same time, that person can still come at you on whatever's on him, he can't get on you. And I'll always say this, you know, I'm no expert on this, but when you're, if you're going to be assaulted or robbed, it's when you least expect it. So for you to have the ability, whether it's a female, you're trying to get it out of your bag, I think you have to be more concerned that you're screaming and hollering, you're fending off, you're trying to get away. And then if you have time to get that pepper spray out, unless it's three o'clock in the morning and you already have it, you know, in your hand, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's up to you. Uh, but uh, that's, that's recommended. Um, the whistle is recommended. I think your voice is the most important thing. If it doesn't look right, you cross the street, you go the other way, you go to a crowd of people, you walk into a store. Um, you know, if you're walking up Charter Street and you just don't feel comfortable, then it might be a better idea to go another way on any given night. Is there a discrepancy in the domestic aggravated assaults? Because I heard. Yeah, what we do is we do the last 30 days. If you look at that, that's breaking down month to month comparisons. Okay, because I heard so, a variety of them. But, you know, but again, the last 30 days would only take us back to, you know, would already be into the first week of November, so some of those could have happened in the first week of November. Okay. That's why you, yeah, that's why you see that we're, we're trying to be really uh, right on. Okay. A lot of our meetings start uh, second and third week. We really don't want to report our crime stats that just stop in November. So what we do is we do the real-time stuff for 30 days right up till today. But those stats, you know, are going to cover the whole month of November and then compare it to last November. So that's why you'll, you'll see a difference uh, in the crimes. Please correct me if I'm mistaken, but I can't recently recall a rash of d &Es, certainly all in one day within the North Bay. That's, well, that's, that's, a, that's um, like one of the addresses was um, free apartments. Even beyond that. Yeah, um, that was on the 16th, but you had four on the 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's the same guy. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. That was my only guess, because the coincidence is tough to think, oh, yes, it is. Oh, yeah. We're okay. working with a problem property right now over in Charlestown uh, where that gentleman had lived for a short time was sort of a flop place problem. And there were two B&Es on that street, a couple of car breaks. And uh, again, on the problem properties note, which is sort of an FYI to everybody, uh, in that particular property, just Sort of what we're dealing with when we have sort of shady characters that might be living in an apartment uh, that we consider to be shady. That particular apartment had 18 green bags of garbage in the backyard with a, with a stove, a microwave, a dishwasher, uh, two air conditioners hanging out of a window, uh, seven or eight garbage bags in the front hallway. So uh, we're trying to clear that up, and again, when we find problem properties, what we find sometimes we might find problematic people. Uh, we've checked that particular location. That person no longer is staying at that location. But um, I, we're pretty confident we'll have an arrest. That building with the sign saying Santa and Son? Sir, what about you? Do you have that report on the 17th or okay. the 18th? Okay, now hold up. But Sorry, I didn't mean to cut it out. I was just asking about the the one in the, I forgot the date, but when the truck went down Charter Street, when the parents' cars were all parked on the sidewalk and the residents' cars were all parked on the on the curb, and this, this uh, white moving truck or some kind of a white cube truck went down and just took off all the parents' wind, uh, mirrors, mm -hmm. you could hear it go snap, 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 as the guy kind of drives along and just takes, just mows off all the parents' mirrors. Well, they were illegally parked, the cars? No, they're always illegally parked, yeah, right up on the sidewalk. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I, that's what I thought, too. too but uh, I, was, I was wondering if you had a record of that uh, crime. Not unless they reported it. The no, they did, they did report it. How long ago that was the fun? I was around the middle of the month, a little bit after the middle of the month. I'm sure we have that. I just wondered if it rang eight bells. I know that the people in our apartment building reported it. Okay, well, we'll get to that right. Now, that incident I told you about. Can you just read? 
Yeah. Outside yeah. of, in and around 50 Prince Street, which is outside the play, when I'm right here. Uh, the 17th or the 18th, about 2.30 in the morning, she drove up the street, drunk out of her mind, smashed about four cars, and supposedly a police officer came down to try to collect the situation. But uh, I'm assuming they arrested her, her because uh, well. of the damage that she caused. And under this little box thing that you have, District 1 Commission, what would that go under? What? What would that go under? We have homicide, sexual assault. Well, let's find the report public? first. Um, what exactly happened? I, I... What street was it? Prince, Prince Street, Prince. right outside of this playground. Mm -hmm. It's 2.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was on the seventeenth. Friday, 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 Friday. Yeah, seventeenth. Yeah. So it, 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 at two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, is that the one? We're I don't have about? the time on it, but it is reported. So what was done about it? I don't have. I don't carry that report. Well, she well, we did not carry it. Not on the board of vehicle accident. No. no. She was drunk out of her mind, smashed into four cars. There were no people in the cars. So there was just a lot of noise on the street that somebody from 50 Prince Street heard the whole entire incident. Now what I'm trying to figure out is why don't you guys have this on this report in front of us? Okay, did you see it? No. Who saw it? Uh, Daria Delafano. Well, so we would have to talk to Daria Delafano just to see. So, but if there was a policeman involved, is what I'm saying. Okay, but I think, down and I, again, we have to talk to Daria. I mean, I wasn't there, but if the officers were there and they spoke to a witness, oh, exactly what happened if she was intoxicated. I, I think the next meeting we'll look up the report, find out which officers were there, and find out exactly what happened. I can't answer to that if a person was intoxicated. The officers on here. This is the first time you brought that up. I don't have a copy of the report. We have a motor vehicle accident. We'll have to ascertain from the police officers exactly what happened and was she in fact intoxicated. I can't answer that question. No, no. What I'm trying to ask you're you asking is me when why we didn't like make an arrest. Happen, I believe. In the north end, yeah. that somebody drives up the streets drunk. Okay, out again, of the again, you're, you're you saying you are, don't say, have this on you are saying well, if, again, you're saying that the person. What happened? Was, if she was. But there was if a policeman was, involved. That's what I'm saying. What I'm trying to explain is if she went to the hospital. Right. Yeah. Well, no. I'll From the accident, she's only getting summoned. But should you not have this on this piece? Not of when paper? it goes to a summons. No. Why not? Because she they, was summons to court. She hasn't even gone to court yet. Yeah, but the incident happened. She smashed four cars. It could have been. Yeah, but I don't carry a motor vehicle accident before. On, on, on the category. If she was arrested, I would have had it. No, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm I hope he arrested her. I'm telling you, she was smashed She was going to be summoned to court. Drunk out of her mind. I hope he arrested her. If she goes to the hospital, she's not arrested. She's summoned to court after her treatment is done. Okay. She gets it in the mail. What we what we trying to. <laughs> Thanks, what we try and do from on the cover sheet, what we've learned over the years is we try and cover all of the part one crimes, homicide, sexual assault, the robberies, the aggravated assaults, the DNEs, and then we added a category for larcenies because people wanted to know about larcenies, and we added the category for uh, the car breaks because people wanted to know about the car breaks. Uh, we added the community disorders at one time in Charlestown, we had some community disorders, we also had another one in Charlestown. We throw in the uh, the towed vehicles. Now, on this particular matter right here, we do have it. it there was a report filed on it. it there was. But, okay, but what we do here is we report out everything on this sheet. Now, again, everybody here, we probably have, I'm not kidding you, in 30 days, we might have another 100 reports that are sort of general reports. If everybody here wants us to report every single report committed. Uh, you know what I mean? There was a there was a content or somebody fell down and was taken to the hospital. We can do that, but I, I think what we're trying to do is we're putting out all the priority, you know, the um, the part one crimes, and then Teddy's reporting out all the arrests. So on something like that, and again, I'm not familiar with it. I did not read that particular report. If it came back as a motor vehicle accident, I usually brief myself on the part one crimes and go over the arrest. But if you have something like that, like anything, we'll gladly look it up. We can get back to you on email or a phone call, and we'll bring it back to the group exactly what happened 
on that particular report. I just thought it was, it seems a little more important than these little... But again, what, you, what I'm trying to stress here is you're getting that information from someone else and you're bringing it to the meeting and that person is saying, well, the, the person was drunk and had four cars and the police department showed up and we didn't make an arrest. And I can't speak on behalf of the police officers and say, if in fact they made an arrest, what they did about the thing, but they did file a report. And I'm just saying that I'll get back to you on it. Is the normal procedure to file a report? That's what I want to know. Is that the right thing? Okay, it says violation auto laws operating after suspension yeah. revocation, which she pretty much arrested. means that she was arrested. arrested. But then again, as Teddy said, if, if she goes to the hospital, she's yeah, going to get some. She's going to get a summons. She's not going to arrest She's going to get summons then because she's at the hospital, which means she's not getting the handcuffs. Right. Okay, but but when we report out the arrest, we're not. It's not an arrest. Why aren't you there when she gets dismissed from the hospital and then arrested? Again, it's a misdemeanor. She's going to get oh, some in the accident. Okay. okay. So a misdemeanor is smashing cars up while you're drunk? Is no. that what you're telling me? That's considered a misdemeanor? I'm, I'm just telling you what the law is. No, I'm asking you. I'm about telling you. Because I, I really don't know what a, what a misdemeanor is. If I, I come I, up the street drunk out of my mind right. and I smash into four cars, that is only a misdemeanor? I think the difference would be if Tom Lima is intoxicated and I I hit a car, and there's nobody in the car, and there's right. no personal injury, I, I cause property damage, right. that's a misdemeanor. But if there's somebody in the car, God forbid, and they're injured, right. and they go to the hospital, if I hit somebody and I keep going, right. you know what I mean, on the street, there's personal injury, that's a felony. Isn't it, you know, that's the difference okay. between felonies and misdemeanors. And it also has to do with the jail or the prison time. Uh, that's supposed to be a sentencing, right? Yeah. Also yeah. You got to go to the state or, you know. Uh, but there was a report done. Oh, no, I, do, yeah. I was thinking after what after your explanation, maybe that was just a more vehicle. Yeah, they were more vehicle. Yeah. You know, I would just suggest too that if you have something that might go back or if there's an inquiry about that, you know, feel free to call the office. You know what I mean? Or I've got some <coughs> email and we'll do some research on it before we get to the meeting or something like that. I just can't give you an answer on that because we don't have that particular report. But we'll gladly get the report. I'll read the whole report and we'll see exactly what happened. Any DUI or misdemeanor? What's that? DUI. Is that a, is oh, that's what we're talking about. If you're arrested for operating under the influence, it's, it's a misdemeanor. Unless you heard something. Yeah, it's a thousand and a half. All right. Uh, quality of life, anybody? Any other quality of life issues? Probably, but. Okay. I, I just wanted to just so the to tell the people in the meeting, just, just for your background information, uh, I had sent them an email to Sergeant Lima and some of the other people, to Stephen and <coughs> um, Councilor Martin and stuff. But uh, uh, there was a, an article in the in the in the paper about a court in the Supreme Court of in Spain. Now I know, okay, Spain. What does that have to do with the North End? But this was a, a judgment where they upheld a sentence for a, a owner of a noisy bar, and he was in prison for four years, and he paid twenty-five thousand euros in uh, damages to people who he had kept up at night, and he had to shut down his business, also. And and their their noise standard is a hundred times more stringent than ours is. So I just just so everybody knows, there are a lot of jurisdictions where it's much stricter than it is here. Right, so well, one interesting thing happened today at, at our Comstep meeting. Without boring anyone, everyone, but you know to have accountability through the ranks and through the different districts back to the police commissioner and the and the chief. Uh, we have what's called Comstat meetings every other week, and uh, to my surprise, uh, they're tracking uh, all types of quality of life now. There's like 20 different categories, and it was sort of interesting when our district was up presenting today, and I was going to hold my breath saying, oh, well, this could be really ugly. And uh, they, for our district, it was, it was on disturbances and, and the loud parties, and there was comparisons done throughout the city. So. If you you know if you've received 911 calls and unfortunately, which isn't good for the group, they track our area from September through the present, yeah. and I said that's that's not good for us. We we need to really know real time. Okay, how's it been the last month compared to September to say we you know can we are we doing any better now or are we are we still where we're at back in September? Yeah. 
But when you, uh, we'll get to it, when you look at, um, when you get up to like the Alston Brighton, that the area, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they go from like a shade of brown to a medium brown to a darker brown to like a real brown and then like a black, like a real dark brown. And I kind of want to thank goodness we're not, you know, Alston and Brighton, we're kind of, we're in this shade right now because out here it's, uh, they, uh, when they brought that up for comparisons throughout the city, they have some uh, serious problems. Except for disturbances, we really didn't have much here up. Biggest area would be that Chinatown uh, Theater District, uh, uh, Stewart and Tremont Street area. So, you know, you kind of would get a general comment, but they didn't really make a big deal out of the loud bodies just because of the area. We it was being videoed, and they, we had all these people in to see how we do Comstep um, from Harvard. And uh, but uh, you know, if it did get to me, I would say, well, I would think we've had a somewhat of a tail off. Through Thanksgiving, you know, now we have finals coming up uh, for the loud parties. We, we still have some loud party complaints, uh, at least off of my desk. We didn't have anything o over the top major, uh, but um, um, you know, they want to see what kind of policies we use, and we're getting we've got correspondence from Alston Bright about that uh, that loud party letter that we give the landlords and all the chapter and sections on uh, disorderly. And so I would kind of felt good about that, that out in Alston Brighton, they're looking to see how we're doing things, where I would think we've well, been in the business a lot longer than us. We haven't had this complaint going back, you know, 15 years ago. So it's, it's, I'd say it's relatively new for us. But. So they, they track it monthly or? I, I would be what they're doing is they do what's called hot spots. They do it for robberies, aggravated assaults, sexual assaults, b and E's. And but what they're doing now is they have brand new categories for quality of life. Well, quality of life, I would, I would think that you would see substantial numbers from May to maybe September, October, because you got the roof, you have the, you know, you have the roof parties and that kind of stuff. And yeah. Open windows, a lot, you know, there's a lot more complaints. Yeah. Well, that's what they track you. So the, I think what I'm trying to get out there is. Again, trying to make everybody more accountable. It's more on me now. What is the CSO sergeant doing about this? What's the captain doing about this? As Manonino has always said, uh, at meetings on our district, you know, I'm not getting calls for shots fired and gang activity and people down. I'm, I'm getting calls for noise. And he had a big meeting at headquarters uh, about three months ago. And he brought in all the commanders, the command staff, the captains, the sergeants, the lieutenants. And he wanted to sit down. He said, "He said this is what I get every day. I get people calling me all the time about noise. And this is what we have to work on. This is what the people are saying." Mm -hmm. And you know, finally, he met the people in this room. So, again, you know, when those emails go out and those 24-hour uh, constituent complaints, what I talk about that 24-hour mass hotline, they are looking at that, and they're saying, "Hey, we have to address this." And now, if you look at you know the way we're doing the club staff, they're saying, "Okay, we're going to start addressing." You know, we're going to really start looking more at the disturbances, and you know, maybe there's somebody out in High Park who's doing it a little bit differently than us. And if it's working well out there, maybe they should try it here. So I guess Stephen Baskin, real quick, just so Stephen Baskin-Tilly is here, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about the audience. We're not from. My voice is very hoarse. I apologize, but the 719th is tentatively going to be the date that the city council will vote on the noise ordinance. So um, that's uh, two weeks from yesterday, December 19th. And um, I'm pretty confident, you know, the council is pretty confident that I think we have enough votes to pass the ordinance. Um, and then we're pretty confident that the mayor is going to sign it. So um, the only thing really going on now is inspectional services in the Boston Police Department <laughs> figuring out how they're going to uh, write the citation or the ticket, whatever you want to call it, and um, how they're going to collect on the fine. So, we can go up to 719, the hearing will probably be around 12 o'clock, but um, it's in the middle of the day, but that's when the council meets. Um, but like I said, it's tentative, anything can change from now until then, but most likely it'll get voted on on the, on the 19th, excuse me. And also there's um, going to be a, a, pay attention, there's a new rental inspection ordinance that the mayor is, is, is um, has drafted and is going into a, uh, um, going to be voted on, not on the 19th, but it's something that's in the pipeline. And um, pay close attention to it, it's pretty, I, I personally like it. There's gonna be a, a landlord registry, so we'll be able to look up our landlords, um, have contacts and all that stuff. And um, it's, um, 
that I think will have a little more, um, might be a little more um, of a debate on whether or not they're going to pass that as is. I know some of the councilors aren't crazy about that, <coughs> but um, um, pay attention to that because it's very extensive. It's very, very, very thorough. Um, I haven't read it all yet, but the, the, my favorite part of what I've read so far is that there will be a landlord registry, which I think is great. And then identify certain probably, um, problem properties and they'll get rental inspections and then with, with, with rental inspections comes, hey, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, and then people start paying. I have to interrupt you for a moment. Supposedly, supposedly now, there is a law in effect, and my husband had his real estate license told me this because I would never know this. If you rent an apartment for five years and the person moves out by law, which nobody in this neighborhood is doing, you are supposed to call up ISD or whoever's in charge. They come in, do an inspection. You are there to check for seventy-five dollars, and yeah. supposedly you get back fifty in the same time. Is that correct? correct? That has never been enforced. No, it never, hasn't. never. For any time you change the rental apartment over, you have to do that. It doesn't have to be. Five years. I heard it was one after five years of no. occupancy. If I get an apartment, out. somebody moves out again. I'm supposed to call the inspection services. For them to come sure the apartments up to code before I rent them. In the new. Well, the, what did I say? That we you just said five years. years. After five years, after when the person moves out. I'm telling you, it's not five years. It's every time you. A person moves every out. Every time you, 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 you rent that. Oh, it's, that's even better. The thing that the thing that stinks about that is it's the responsibility yeah. of the landlord to call yeah. ISD yeah. to have the inspection yeah. done. Yeah. And so who cool that. Most people think. Well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I can't see what the problem is. It's only if I do something wrong. Anybody else? But who would address the audience? Question on the floor. Yeah, I have something to say. I just wanted to know tomorrow is the holiday stroll. Yeah. Just for the mention. Oh, yeah. And I just want to know there will be a lot of, well, not a lot, but there will be quite a few police walking around, but that's, there's going to be a lot of people out. And it's from seven to eleven. On the back of the table. Yeah, we uh, we have a we have a uh, we have a scroll with Sam and everything down at Dinky Hill right now. We have the captains down there right now with the supervisor and the officers. So we'll have we'll have the same thing. And I believe for the mayor's holiday uh, trolley tour, I believe his wife will be uh, you know celebrating the. Uh, the holiday season with the neighbors, so that's that's the you guys have the same thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, it, 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 you can bring up anything no, you want. I know if you were still on top of your life, if that falls into quality. I can't fix a pocket ticket right now, but. No, no, no. I have an issue that the uh, crosswalk at Battery and Hanover is regularly blocked on weekends. Um, there's cars always parked in it all week, and they get tickets. Yep. And I called 911. I have a son <coughs> with a disability. Yep. Do you mean on the Battery Street side? No, on the. Oh, the one that goes from Hanover to Battery. The one near the laundromat. Yes. Thank you. There's always cars. I call 4500. I try to get them towed. Yeah, I did too. It's like, look, look what happened. An officer comes to, comes to my apartment. He buzzes me because I apparently I didn't tell him where I live, but apparently from the phone call he knows. That I live. And he said, "What can I do for you?" What can you do for me? I called. There's a car in the crosswalk, and it's a, a major inconvenience for my family. He goes out, he looks, there's a ticket on the car, he gets in the car and drives off. I saw that, I saw that whole, mm -hmm. I live right there. And I, and I get you know, and once in a while, and it's not that they're there for a day or an hour, they park for the weekend. He was there for the weekend. This was about two weeks ago. Yeah, right? and, and it's happened, and he had like three tickets. I guess you can only give one ticket every 24 hours or something, is that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. He had two or three tickets on his windshield, the first one. And then, I'm saying since your last meeting, this, it's happened at least twice. I don't know, what else can you do? You know, I'll, I'll bring it back to the offices and bring that issue up to the offices. And, I mean, know. I'm not, 
They'll listen. Parking's an issue. I understand that. But crosswalks, right. you know, crosswalks. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get run over when you're We're actually trying to get a pedestrian ramp there. Yeah. My neighbor has a walker, and she uses that walk, yeah. crosswalk a lot. You know, I just she asked me to have a ped ramp put there. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah. if we get a ped ramp put there, what can I do for you? I, well, I, I mean, this is the first I've heard of yeah. it. It's the first time I believe you've been at the meeting. It is, and that's specifically why it came. Well, I'm going to bring it back to the captain then. The officers will be instructed with the tag. 404 handle. They'll be what in tow. What, what, what's what's the situation? Well, so what we'll do is we'll respond to it and we'll put the tag on. I only know that because I talked to a meter maid the other day and asked her about that. And I said, if someone parked at a crosswalk, is it just a ticket? And they said, no, you can call 911 and request that that car be towed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a bad guy, but it's right there. It's the, it's the crosswalk we use. Right. I don't well, like, again, you know, I mean, it, we, we cover 11 neighborhoods for the amount of crosswalks. We, we give out an, an awful lot of tags. Yeah. We do a lot of movers, and yeah. we do how many toes did we put them on? We did, I think, what did we say, eight? You call, but are those that street sweeping toes? Are no, those are no. no, 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 no we have nothing to do okay. with street sweeping. But, I, but again, the, the goal here is the partnership. I now understand there's an issue beyond the cost part of the crosswalk, so we can. You know, definitely. Maybe the officer who maybe put the tag on it may have wanted to see if there was anything more to it. So, I mean, they were learning a little bit more, and that, you know, obviously is beyond just a crosswalk. So, we can definitely get the officers to get out there and, and tow it. But it would be great to have maybe, I don't know, whether if that ever comes about or uh, I'll have to check the signage about, you know, really just getting a tow sign right there. Um, because it, what you're saying is that the city called 911. It's different cars all the time? <laughs> it was, in the last month, I've only been living here since September. Oh. So the month of November, there were two weekends that a car was parked there for at least 24 hours, at least. Yeah. I think in, in both cases that they kind of settled in for the weekend. Okay. And they were tagged. There's no question. They were tagged. But if you call transportation, call the hotline, and then ask for the transportation, and you ask transportation to come over. Yeah, so I guess you can call 911. You can call 635 4500 too. They might be able to like directly put you in contact with the PTD. And they'll send the Boston transportation to all. Yeah. Just to let you know, we on average, just us, we give out on average 380 parking tickets in this neighborhood every single month, which amounts to almost 4,000 tickets every year. So I think partly you have residents who might be illegally parking, but what I think you find more so, people who are coming in to dine, going to restaurants, or people who are staying in somebody's apartment for the weekend. So if you're brand new since September, you know, again, you have, that's the magnitude of how many tags we give out, crosswalks, handicapped, Mostly the it's mostly non resident though, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But you know, we, we we're dealing with valet service. People who a lot of people will eat the tag just to go dine. Sure. They're not gonna look for a parking spot. And uh, in the north end that is it's a huge quality of life, but we've, we've been at this for a long time and we give out, like I said, on every I think that's a lot. Know about anybody else, but 380 parking tickets a month every month is a lot of tickets. So I think that's telling you there's a lot of people coming into the North End that aren't from the North End that they, they, they eat that one ticket and then they're gone. And, and that doesn't count the meter main tickets, right? Well, that's that's the big thing. They're giving up more tickets than we have. So you're just talking tickets given up by the police department? This is just the police department. These are, these are officers driving around cruises and saying, oh, let me grab that, grab that, let me check the next call. I gotta get over to you know. You know, we got a bank robbery call downtown. Yeah, the meter maids are probably, I don't know how many more they're doing. They're they doing at least, that's, I don't know. Say at least double, maybe Chris, for triple. Yeah. Anything else? Mark, you have a question? I, yeah, I have about Cooper. And Cooper Street, where it narrows, on the left hand side of Care Park, until it reaches towards the end, you can park your three cars in there. And there's always a car before the no parking sign. And had there been a car that fire the day there was that fire, there would have been serious problems. Mm -hmm. And I, I broke enough balls to get a sign put up, and it doesn't help. There's still a car there almost every night. Yeah. And is sometimes they park, but sometimes there's two, and you can't even buy. Is it a different car every night? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, then you, you know, we need to get. We, we get Talking about the left side? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're a it's kind of horrendous. We're going to put it on a, a, you know, a, a directed patrol. We had that in Charlestown about one particular person that 
lived in a particular house that was constantly blocking. It was like an alley. It's a, it's a place. I don't want to say what street it was, but uh, we got the plate number, called her up. She kind of explained her situation. She had a situation, but we explained the other situation when it came to having a fire. And not that we made an agreement, but for the only time she'll ever pull up will be, you know, two to three minutes to drop off the groceries, flashes on, she'll be right out of there. But she'll no longer park on there. So if they're regular people, if you can get me some plate numbers with gladly give a courtesy it's call. Them. Is, if they're different right. people all the time, then you have to call 911 because, again, is it is it bar restaurant related? Is it ballet related? You know, why are these people parking? Are they guests of somebody? And uh, if you live there, then everybody should be on the same page that if you park you on that sign, you're going to get a ticket. And you can call anonymously on your cell phone. You don't have to leave your name and information. Oh, my God. I, I've had about three cars towed from that area. They do tow sometimes, sometimes they don't. But sometimes you can't, sometimes the cars have to back up to go down. They can't make it. Mm -hmm. An ambulance, forget it. Somebody's going to die. It's just so common. Can okay. you say the key here is besides making a call, is there a license plate? Yeah. Uh, so two weeks ago, uh, my daughter was in the school family building. What street? I'm in the car, right across the path of the rear. They all go in front of the class and get to do things. That's mm -hmm. a lot of bench. Yeah. And, uh, Who does that? The kids that live in the street, the little kids that live there. They come, I have a big thing in the, the ceramic on the buildings and the brick. Oh, so my shoot. daughter goes noise outside, so she don't felt any. She said, well, I'm nice, they're praying. She's talking about praying. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, they're going to try to break. How old are they? They were young. They must have been like, they're going to call. It's just, it's just girls. And boys, so they yeah. go down to me. Called up, but no came. I'm putting fat cameras in. I'll call them tomorrow, but one in the front and one in the back. We'll go down ourselves. Was there any damage to the statue? No, they didn't. But they tried. My daughter went out. And you no, know, they ran up the street. And then, well, well, what made you think they were? They were banging, and my daughter heard them. That's why yeah. she's right there on the street. She's sorry? Of course. Oh, yeah, she, you said she, she, she heard it, but did you see it? Oh, she of course she heard it. Really? She's right there. I'm no, just asking. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. She's right there. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, I'm sorry, then, then about uh, two days after, the next week, on the Thursday night, two kids with no shirt on, from the Casa Maria, like a show. Uh, he had no shirt, I saw one of them, and the other kid had a fight in the middle of the street. They were getting ready to kill each other. Kids, one was half sprung. I called 911, but then by the time they, they, they go away. The fight's over. Okay. And then the scene is right there, and it's just right in front of the camera. Right. Right. So everything is fine. Yeah, I don't know if it's light. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just being at the month, I haven't heard. I mean, it's, it's an awful thing, but I mean, I haven't heard that. Has anyone seen that lately in any of the streets in the last three or four weeks? No, this was about three weeks. Three weeks ago, so they were fighting. I requested for a hand cap in front of my house because I have a very bad case of seeing my back problems and I hop along. But anyways, just to let you know, I, I requested for that. Now, they had a function on the handlers on Battery Street. Madonna de la Gala, they told a big, big Halloween party for all the children, which was great. And meanwhile, they were told, a couple of days before this, Patty had told me, Annette, take your car, because I told her I can't walk down with this, and she says, take your car and go down on Commercial Street, right around the corner. I taped it off. I said, oh, thank you very much, because I would have had to go looking for a spot. Well, I did that. Now I see them towing all the cars, and uh, I saw the guy, I guess he takes pictures of your car being towed. Mm -hmm. And he was taking pictures of the cars, so I said to him, oh, um, by the way, my car is around the corner. Daddy told me to park there, you know, where the, the ribbon is. He said, well, I hope you put something on your car. I said, like what? He said, well, you should put your name and your telephone number and special event. I said, oh, man, she didn't tell me that. So I went into the house, and I got a piece of paper about this size, and I put my name, my telephone number, special event, with two pieces of tape, and I was going to tape it on my window. When I went down there, the car was gone. 
So I went back to Patty and I told her, I said, Patty, they took my car. And I says, and uh, thank God this guy told me, which I was hoping she would have done, to put my name, telephone number, and special event so they wouldn't touch it. Well, she called up somebody, and then she said to me, uh, you got to go down and get your car at the boat place. I said, Patty, would you want me to fly? They took my car. How am I going to get there? So one of the guys that was towing said, she said, get in his truck. He's got to bring the car down there. You can go down there and get your car. So I went down there with him, and I told the lady, I said, oh, my car wasn't supposed to be towed. Ba, ba, ba. I, I can't do anything about it. You have to pay. And she charged me $93. Just, just came in. And I had to pay $93. Did you already pay it? Huh? Did you pay it? Yeah, I paid right there. You Did can't you take it out. Yeah. Unless you pay it. What I recommend they can do what is... What was it told for? A special event? Or well, they had a special... Thing. They had the Halloween party on the yeah. on Saturday yeah. street. Where did you go so pick it up? In front of the or in some of them? Some of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. I have no idea where the hell it was. Thank God that clock thing that... Uh, so you, 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 pay, you pay for it to get it up, or what I would recommend that you do is appeal. I did. Oh. Now this is the question I was trying to get at, so yep. I think I tell you So I went to City Hall the very next day, yep. and I appealed it. Yep. Talked to the girl, and I was telling her all about it. And she said, all right, uh, you're going to have to have a hearing. Yep. Now my question is, when and how long... And do I keep calling them to say, when is the hearing? Uh, they'll give you a hearing, and you'll, you'll, you'll go to city hall. You'll, you'll go it to takes city. a couple of months. A couple of months? It takes, it, it, <laughs> in my case, it took a couple of months to get the hearing scheduled. Once you get the notification of it, then it's like another week or two until you go there. But they're very reasonable. If you've got a good case, and, and you've got the evidence, instead of just going in there angry, but you've got the facts, figures, this is what happened, they're, they're quite reasonable. Yeah. Well, he said, or she said, have Patty write up, stay with Patty. Right. You know something? If, if you call me tomorrow and you give me your license plate number, I will go down to the parking clerk's office and I will see if you have an appeal. In, in, in the event you don't, which you said you do, I will find oh, out. Oh, I, the I date appealed it and she said, okay, you have I'll to. help you expedite the day. All right, and then you can come up and you state your case, and I'll go talk to Patty, and she'll write down that it was a misunderstanding with the yeah, right? yeah, because that's what she told me. She says, have Patty write you a letter. Call me tomorrow. And then you bring it to City Hall. I said, but Patty works at City Hall. Doesn't she still work there? Yeah. Yeah. Did they give us a ticket? Oh, she shared. see guys. It's a good question. Yeah, all I What did you ask, Patty? Patty? Did they reimburse the party? Did they reimburse the party? Did they reimburse the party? Did they reimburse well, I only got. I, I think what's going to happen, you know, the, the whole. I there was a ticket on my car. So you're going to appeal the ticket, but she, she can appeal. The good thing is she was told by the Boston Transportation Department. Right. If she was told by City Side, yeah. you're not getting that money. Right? That's a that's something. Yeah, that's right. She was told by BTP. She's in the game. Not necessarily. That's no, not necessarily. No, no. City Side didn't usually give you money. Patty. So if you have a situation, you can give me a call on. Certainly. Certainly. Just for, for people's information too, the time that I got that I had to go through the appeal, it was because when they put those bike lanes in on, on commercial and Atlantic, they put markings on the streets for where that you park and can't park and all this and that, right? And so I went and parked according to where the boundaries of the markings were, but there was a sign about six feet away from it. In other words, the, the where the where the markings for the that they put down when the bike lanes were put in. That had a different point at which the end, past which you couldn't park, than what the sign had. And so I got a ticket. So I appealed it and said, "Come on, you guys put the markings in. I'm le I took the pictures of it. I'm legal by the by the markings, but not by the sign. I didn't know which one to go by. So what they told me, they they gave they erased my ticket. But they said in the future, obey the signs, not the boundaries, not the not the markings." Obey the sign. That's what they told me. Yeah. Well, I really feel like it shouldn't pay because, I mean, yeah. she should have told me to put that. Well, on those me. types of things, again, you know, instead of waiting for the meetings, you have a situation like that, give my office a call. You know, and then we can yeah. make some calls and just see exactly what's going on. So, did all those things like she's talking about were supposedly be done with the police? They did it to yeah. four different police and a couple of other ones. They put that yellow tape along the street and said, can't park here. Right. Doing the thing. Well, I talked to Patty Butler. She said that it was a mistake. 
Then it happened four or five more times. What, what happened four or five more times? It blocked the air. It blocked the air. So you couldn't rock. Not only for the Halloween piece, they did it for the feast. Well, the ribbon and the signage comes from BTD. That's Boston Transportation. But it says you are the animal. You say they do it yeah. in advance. They well, post. Because we got to do that post on yeah. So in advance, they're supposed to 48 hours in advance. And well, usually why, the feast. why should they take 10 spaces away from residents for a feast that's not even on that street? Talking about one commercial. So yeah. for like Madonna Bella Capo or Santa yeah. Pina, they go around commercial, right? They go from like, I know what you're talking about, they take spots away on the streets that where the event isn't taking place. That doesn't make sense. Well, that's what well, the, the, the guys who have their, uh, what do you call it? But when the entertainment comes, yeah. trucks come, yeah. so they always allot spaces for that. I think some feasts, and I think in the past couple of years, I agree with you, they've taken it above and beyond oh, what yeah. they really need to do. Matter of fact, this year St. Joseph tried to do it from the bottom of Charter all the way to the Connor Foster. And I actually called Paz like, that's a little over the top. And she was cool. She said, you know what? People have problems with it. She took the spot. And some of them also went from Saturday down to Hanover. Yeah. Especially. Well, you know what we could do is, I mean, I agree. And I'm a member of Madonna Della Cava. I, I, I agree 100%. At a future meeting, I think we should consider having somebody from the City of Boston Special Events Department because it sounds to me as this has to be, and we need a little more discussion. You know what is good though? The, the, Patty will, she runs the plates. And if it's a resident, if it's a resident, if there's a resident stepping on the car, oh yeah. Patty has the spreadsheet and she can look it up by number. Mm -hmm. And she'll look up and there's a phone number and right. she'll call. Right. So they don't just tell you, they'll call you. They call first, yeah. But if you're an out-of-state plate, you're probably you're going to get told because they're not going to have you right. as a resident. Right. Every resident, pop, every um, owner of a vehicle who has a resident sticker in this neighborhood is on, a, is on a list of the City yeah. of Boston Transportation Department. So when there's a special event in the neighborhood, they, will, they, can, they can look up your... Uh, and I think you also, you uh, as an individual, can go on online, if you're online, and get notifications for all the special events. Mm -hmm. So that they're emailed to you. 617. True. Three, I'm four, still three, trying to put your name on myself. 627. Okay. <laughs> in the parking department, you can get special events. In what street from Montreal? No, but like you said, she's good for that. If your car was there, she sees it, you're a resident, like you said, she immediately calls because she tells you that. Get your car out of here. She does a call. She does a call. Oh, yeah. Well, they call you if you're if like that they hold up the spot for moving uh, or construction. Will they still call you for that? Not moving, but if there's like a uh, uh, you know, some, 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 some of the police are really cool. They'll they'll actually some police officers that do the detail they'll run your place. Yeah, and if they know you they know you're in the vicinity, they'll come ring. I called ring my bell one morning before. Thanks everyone.